Hi guys, it's Ben Heath from Lead Guru, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze your Facebook ad results. I'm going to show you which metrics you need to track, you need to keep an eye on, and what data you should base your adjustments and the optimization of your campaigns around to help you get better performance. Now, before I get into that, I just want to very quickly ask for you to smash a like on this video, click that like button, and of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new and you haven't done so already. That would be very much appreciated. Okay, so Facebook ads analysis, how do you analyze your results? How do you improve performance? Let's uh, let's get into it. So I'm, I'm in an example Facebook ad account right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly create an example Facebook ad campaign. And then I'm gonna bring up the various metrics and, and data points that you need to pay attention to, when you should pay attention to them, when you should make uh, adjustments and decisions based on what you see and cover all that sort of stuff. Now I wanna quickly say that, um, you know, Facebook ad campaign analysis is not that difficult. It's not as, as difficult as most people make it out to be. Facebook ads manager looks very overwhelming, looks very uh, complicated, and it can be, but if you know what to focus on and know what you can ignore, it becomes a lot more straightforward. So hopefully that's what I'm gonna do for you guys in this video. So I'm just gonna call this example, ad campaign. Uh, I'm gonna change the campaign objective to conversions. Now, the campaign objective you select is going to dictate which metrics you should track, the data that's displayed, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's why I want to go with conversions because then you're going to see the data that is far more representative of what it is that we're going to be going through. Okay, so there's our example conversions campaign. And I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to keep looking at the campaign level. So now, of course, Facebook's default is things like results, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the first metric and the single most important metric that you need to keep an eye on, particularly when you're running a conversions campaign, is your cost per result, your cost per conversion. If you're generating leads, what is your cost per lead? If you're trying to generate purchases, what is your cost per purchase? And what the, the first thing I will say about that metric is that it's so important that if that is a good number for you, let's say your business can afford to pay $50 a lead and you're currently generating leads for $20, $22, None of the other metrics, none of the other uh, points that you can analyze need to take place. You don't need to bo what bother with any of that. If your core metric, your cost per result, uh, your cost per conversion, I shouldn't say cost per result because if you've got a different campaign objective, your cost per result could be something else. If your cost per conversion is nicely profitable for your business. You know, if you can if you can afford to pay up to $15 in terms of cost per purchase and you're generating purchase for $6, that's fantastic. And, and, and if that's the case, base all your decisions around cost per result. So when you're assessing different targeting options, which one produces the best cost per conversion? When you're assessing different ads, which one produces the best cost per conversion? Pause the underperformers, go with the best performing ones, and just base everything around cost per conversion. Just ignore all the rest of it. You don't need to worry about that, at, at least not initially, okay? I'll explain that a bit more about that in a second, why that little caveat comes into place. It's when you're not really generating conversions or you're well above your acceptable cost per conversion, either generating leads, purchases, app installs, whatever it happens to be. That's when you need to really focus on these other metrics and these other data points and make adjustments accordingly, okay? So I'm gonna get into that in, in, in a second. So that's the first one, cost per conversion. The second one, and this is why I caveated the you don't need to worry about anything else, is frequency. So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and change the columns to delivery. And you'll see this number in here, frequency. Frequency refers to the number of times on average that a person within your target audience has seen an ad at this stage within the campaign. You'll also see that you can look at frequency at the ad set level. You can also look at frequency at the ad level. Let's jump back to the campaign. Why is this important? So this is probably one of the only other metrics you need to track if your campaign's performing well. If your campaign is delivering a great cost per conversion, this is probably one of the only things you need to keep an eye on Otherwise, as I said, just base all your optimization decisions around cost per conversion. But of course, it sort of makes sense that once your frequency gets above a certain number, campaign performance is going to drop. You know, if everyone in your target audience has already seen your ad a couple of times, well, they're not going to be bothered. They're going to take a look at it. They're just sort of going to mentally ignore it because they're going to go, oh, I've seen that. Carry on scrolling. We want something else. OK, so frequency is an important number. What do we tend to see? We tend to see that with cold audiences, so with people that have not interacted with your business before, 
When your frequency reaches a 2, maybe even a 2.5 in that sort of range, that's when we start to see results drop off. Now, there are all bunch of things you can do to combat frequency, like creating new ads, uh, targeting new audiences, and I'll include a link in the video description below to another video that talks all about how to combat ad frequency, um, high frequency numbers, and how you can do what you can do to combat ad fatigue and, and really get over those issues. So there are solutions, but keep an eye on frequency. If it's with cold audience, you start to get see it like it's a 2.4, something like that, think, okay, I'm now gonna need to make some changes. Otherwise, base everything around your cost per conversion, as I've mentioned. With warm audiences, so people on your email list, people who visited your website, stuff like that, you can usually get away with much higher frequency numbers. What that is for you really depends on your business and actually how warm that audience is. So for example, someone in my Facebook group uh, very much follows the content that I produce on average. I can probably get away with frequency numbers above 10. Other businesses might struggle with warm audience frequency numbers above a six. I've seen some campaigns can have warm audience frequency numbers go above 20 and the still campaign still does very well. So what I recommend with your warm audiences is just keep a real close eye on what that frequency is in relation to your results. So when you start to see your results drop off from your warm audience and they usually drop off quite quickly when they do it, then go, aha, my frequency is an eight. My results in my warm audience are really starting to tail off. I've got ad fatigue, I've got a frequency issue, I need to do something about it, okay? So that's one of the most important metrics to track is um, is frequency. Okay, let's go back into, oh, I don't want to go breakdown, no, let's get back into performance, which is the default. The next thing I'm going to talk about, and this is again now, we're, we're getting into the realms of your campaign is not delivering, and this is the stuff you want to track, because otherwise, as we've already talked about, you want to be basing on cost per conversion exclusively. But let's say your cost per conversion is way too high thinking, right, well, I need to get into this now. I need to analyze the various elements and work out what's going wrong. So what I want you to do is break down effectively your sales funnel. So we've got here uh, default is performance. One thing I wanna do is I wanna go to performance and clicks. And then you'll see here that at the end, you're gonna get a bunch of data in here. One of the which is gonna be link clicks and cost per link click specifically. Why is that important? I don't want you to optimize for the lowest cost per link click. That's what a traffic campaign is. And as we know, traffic campaigns do not deliver as good results as conversion campaigns the vast majority of the time. So I don't want you to go in here and think, oh, let's pause these ads with um, lower link click, uh, more expensive link clicks. Let's pause these audiences with more expensive link clicks, et cetera, et cetera. That's not how I want you to do about it. What I want you to do is take a look at the ratio between your link clicks and your conversion rate. So let's assume you're sending people through to a sales page and you're generating tons and tons of link clicks, but very, very few conversions. What does that tell me? That tells me there's probably something wrong with your sales page. The ad campaign was doing its job. It was getting people, it's getting people interested in the ad, it was sending people through to the website, people who are likely to purchase, but they're not purchasing because the sales page is not doing the work that you want it to do. What would be a low conversion rate from link clicks to purchase or link clicks to leads? Well, that very much depends on what it is that you're offering. If you're trying to advertise a lead magnet and get people to opt in for an email list, you probably want a conversion rate from link clicks to email opt-ins that's at least 20%, ideally something in the 40% range, something really, really high. If you're an e-commerce business and you are start and you are sending people through to your website to make a direct purchase, if your conversion rate from link clicks to purchase is less than, let's say, 2%, you've probably got an issue. You want to be in that sort of 2 to 5% range, ideally. So it really depends on what you're advertising, and you're going to have to work that out for your business specifically. The way I do that is I'd look across all your various campaigns, things you've done on Facebook, perhaps look at other sources, you know, what's the conversion rate from other sources, and try and find, work out what it should be. Potentially even contact people in your industry. Ask, if you've got friends that offer similar things, ask them what their conversion rates are on their sales pages, on their landing pages. Because as I said, if you're an e-commerce business and you're converting at half a percent, so you need to send 200 people to your website to get a purchase, you're in trouble. That's not gonna work. That sales page probably needs some work doing to it. Perhaps you need some testimonials. Perhaps you need some more benefits about the product. Perhaps you need an explainer video. All sorts of things you can do, but just analyze the various elements, okay? So that's one thing I wanted to, um, to highlight. If your campaign isn't delivering, and something that we definitely track is your link click to conversion ratio on your Facebook ad campaigns. Now, something that's kind of related to that, but I'm gonna to have to customize my columns to bring this up, is 
specifically to do with e-commerce. I'm going to go through, add these in and explain what they are. So I'm going to add in my add to carts, add to cart even. Uh, let's go with total and let's go with cost. And they've, you see that when you add, by the way, if you're not familiar with customizing columns, you can do exactly what I just did. Come in, you can add in all sorts of different data and metrics points. So I'm going to get rid of these extra ones. I just want to have a look at my total add to cart, my cost per add to cart. I'm also going to do the same with purchases. Now, if you're, if you're running a conversions campaign and you're optimizing for purchases, this purchase data will be in your um, displayed in your columns anyway. So you won't need to specifically do what I'm doing, but it doesn't hurt to show you how to do this. Right, so I'm going to apply this. Now, at the end, we've got here add to cart, cost per add to cart purchases and cost per purchase. This happens quite a lot with e-commerce businesses where we will see very high add to carts, but not many purchases. And this is a really important piece of analysis to do on your Facebook ad campaign. It's an important data point to track is that if you are seeing tons of add to carts, but not many purchases. So let's say you're seeing 10 add to carts for every purchase. That's too many. You're always going to have more add to carts than you are purchases, but it shouldn't be a 10 to 1 ratio or anything close to that. If you see that sort of data, you need to make an adjustment to something. Usually your checkout page, potentially delivery fee. You know, if you're getting lots of add to carts and you're whacking on a big old delivery fee or telling people it's going to take them two or three weeks for them to have their thing delivered. That's really going to get in the way of people converting. And that's why your purchase fee might be very low. So as I said, if you're running your campaign, you're, let's scroll all the way over, you're happily going about things, you're seeing that your cost per purchase is just way off where it needs to be. This is where you need to get more detailed, more granular into what it is you're doing. If you see that actually your campaign's generating lots of ads to carts, that's good to know, generating lots of ads to carts. That means the campaign is doing its job to a certain point, right? People are interested, they're clicking, they're, they're initiating checkout, they're adding to cart, they're going through your sales process, but something's falling down, perhaps it's your checkout page, okay? And I said, it could be delivery, could be the design of it, could be that something's not working even properly or it's loading very slowly, all sorts of issues that really get in the way. So these are things to, to very much focus on and break down in a quite granular way. Another metric that you can see right here that I think is important to keep an eye on, again, if your campaigns just aren't doing well and you can't base things really around cost per conversion, is your CPM. CPM, as you can see, refers to cost per thousand impressions. CPM is how Facebook thinks of the cost of Facebook advertising. So when people will say like, will it be more expensive for me to advertise in the US versus for me to advertise in India? In CPMs, absolutely, the US is gonna be a much more expensive market to advertise in. But if you're selling an expensive product, in results, in cost per conversion, it might be less expensive to advertise in the US because, of course, a much higher percentage of people may be able to afford your product or service because the average person in the US um, earns a, a much larger salary than the average person in India, for example. OK, so your actual cost per conversion may be, may be much better. But when we talk about cost, we're talking about CPM. And when I'm sort of evaluating the cost of something when it comes to Facebook advertising, I'm talking about CPM, separate from conversions. OK, so just want to make that clear to start with. Right. What affects your CPM? Because that's how Facebook thinks in terms of cost. One of the big, big, big things is basically how people are reacting to your ads. What used to be termed as the relevant score, but is now broken down into three different metrics, quality ranking, engagement ranking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if your ads are not resonating very well with your target audience, perhaps it's annoying them. They're hiding your ad. They're not engaging with it. It's not grabbing their attention. They're not looking at it. They're not clicking on the links. They're not doing all that sort of stuff. That's going to affect your what used to be called relevant score, your quality ranking and things like that. And that is going to re get off that. that is going to increase your CPM because Facebook rewards advertisers that put ads on their platform that people are interested in, that are engaging, that aren't annoying and all that sort of stuff. If they didn't, Facebook may get into trouble in terms of their ads are annoying their users so much that their users stop using the platform. So Facebook is highly incentivized to reward advertisers that produce ads that get lots of engagement that people enjoy and all that sort of stuff and one of the ways to express that i mean yes you could we could jump over to the ad level and here we go you'll see we could have a look at our quality ranking our engagement ranking conversion rate ranking and that is important i'll get into that in a second but uh, where was i one of the great ways of seeing that in in a, in a specific number is your cpm so what does this mean? Because certain places are much more expensive to advertise to. Certain industries are much more expensive to advertise in. You know, if you're advertising like premium insurance or 
uh, high-end financial advisory services and you're going after people with really high net worth, yeah, they're really expensive to advertise to because so is everyone else, right? So it's not really useful to take a look at your CPMs and be like, well, they're expensive in that case. What you want to look at in terms of CPMs is the difference between various elements in your campaign. So which ad set, which targeting option is delivering a much higher CPM? If one's, let's say, at $40 CPM, another one's at $15 CPM, well, perhaps you should ignore the more expensive one. Again, with the caveat that your cost per conversion is the first thing you optimize around. Perhaps you've got a bunch of different ads and some have much higher CPMs on than others. And, and you're trying to work out why. It may well just be those ads aren't resonating. They're not landing. They're not delivering um, the sort of results that, that, that Facebook wants from an engagement standpoint. Um, and therefore your CPM is much higher. Perhaps pause those and look to create more ads that are similar to the best performers. So that's how we would use CPM. We'd use it as a relative tracking metric um, to assess how much Facebook is liking the various components within our campaign and pause the underformers and optimize accordingly. As I said, if I jump to the ad level, you can see that you've got these three that used to be the ad relevance score that's sort of broken down quality rank, engagement rate ranking, conversion rate ranking. This is something that people pay a lot of attention to. I don't too much. They don't really give you the, I just found it much easier with a relevant score, a number out of 10. Now they give you above average, below average, average, et cetera, et cetera. We've got all sorts of campaigns. We've got campaigns that haven't worked, that had above average. We've got campaigns that are working incredibly well, that are below average. So I don't really pay attention to this too much, okay? And there are just a million other metrics that you could be tracking and things you could be basing your, your data around. But honestly, those are basically the things that we look at and that we pay attention to. Sounds very simplistic, but to be honest, with Facebook advertising, with digital marketing, even with online business in general, simple usually works much better than overly complex. It really does. Um, so just a quick recap, you wanna start with your cost per conversion. That's by far the most important thing. If that's good, you base all your decisions around that, nothing else. Always keeping an eye on frequency, very important. Facebook ad fatigue is a real thing and something you need to avoid and mitigate when it comes about. Um, Look at your conversion rate between your link clicks and your cost and your, your number of conversions. Where is that? What should that be? Does that tell you that your landing page or sales page is not good enough? Take a look at the difference between add to carts and purchases. Is there an issue with your checkout process? You're getting lots of add to carts but not purchases. There's something wrong there. Maybe it's not the Facebook ad campaign's fault. Or maybe it is. Maybe you need to put, provide more proof in your Facebook ad in maybe the form of a testimonial or review. Uh, perhaps you need to get some more demonstration into a video, something along those lines. And then finally, your CPMs, right? So your cost per thousand impressions. How much does Facebook like various components of your ad campaign? And how does that impact how much you're paying to reach people? And how does that impact how you should optimize your campaign? So hopefully that's been useful. Before you go, a couple of free things I wanna very, very quickly mention. The first is a webinar I've created called Three Killer Facebook Advertising Strategies to Double or More Your Revenue. Fantastic uh, resource that's literally I've had um, I was going to say thousands, but I think it might even be tens of thousands of people go through this webinar right now. Uh, feedback's been amazing. People find it very, very useful. Go ahead and check that out. It's free. Link is in the description. It's all about Facebook advertising strategy. So a very, very, very important topic. Other free thing is my Facebook ads mastermind group. It's a free group, one of the biggest Facebook groups in the world to do with Facebook advertising. Got more than 40,000 members all asking questions, getting them answered, connecting with like-minded people. I provide free training in there every single week. If that sounds like something you want to be part of, make sure you go ahead and join. And then finally, I just want to quickly mention our Facebook advertising services. So my company, Lead Guru, the primary thing that we do is we uh, offer done-for-you Facebook and Instagram advertising services. So we can create campaigns, manage them, optimize them. If you're currently running campaigns yourself, we can almost certainly get better results than what you've been able to achieve. And that's, you know, I don't want to sort of criticize anything you're doing. I'm sure you're doing a great job, but it's just to do with the fact that we're managing millions and millions of dollars in Facebook ad spend. We're uh, constantly working on dozens of different client accounts. And, um, and you know, we have the experience to, to know how to get the best results out of this fantastic advertising platform. So if you are spending more than $3,000 a month or want to spend more than $3,000 a month, that's the starting point to work with us. Go ahead and book a free 30 minute strategy session with me. A link will be in the video description below, right at the bottom. Um, you just have to fill out a little bit of data. I should warn you, there's a lot of demand for our services right now. So there's about a three week or so wait time to speak with me. That might change, of course, by the time you, uh, you watch this video, but I just wanted to make you aware of that but yeah go ahead and get that that session booked in if, if you're interested in our services 
um, and we'll just, you know, informal chat. I'll let you know how we work. You can let me know what it is you're looking to achieve. I can see if we're we're a good fit and we can uh, we can go from there, basically. Right. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please give it a like. Smash that like button. That'd be much appreciated. Comment below to let me know. That's always really helpful. Comment below if you've got any questions. Um, I, I'm not able to get to all the questions in terms of a response, but I do see all the questions. I respond to as many as I can. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new and you haven't done so already. I release Facebook advertising related content uh, multiple times uh, per week. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. Okay, best of luck with your Facebook ad campaigns, guys. Now you know to analyze your Facebook ad campaigns and, and improve results. Um, just as we do, make the adjustments you need to get better results. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.